1135, Representative Moreno, lady moves to call her from this calendar. Without objection. Relative to termination of parental rights, provide relative to parties who may petition. Representative Moreno. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, this bill provides that when a child is conceived as a result of a sex offense, that the victim of the sex offense may petition to terminate the rights of the perpetrator of the sex offense. Happy to take any questions. There are no questions. Uh, there is one question, Representative Mack. So is, this only pertains to a child conceived, conceived. of a sex offense. This mm -hmm. has nothing to do with carnal knowledge or No, 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 or no, no, no. It's, like just, it's just conceived. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are no other questions. I believe we have an amendment. Representative Nancy Landry offers amendment 2770 on the computers. Representative Landry on your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, this amendment just removes the language that says um, pro se or through counsel. In other areas of law, we don't um, specify that someone can proceed pro se. Um, we are a fact pleading state. Anybody can proceed pro se in, with very limited exception. And I, I represent a lot of pro se clients. I coach them on how to represent themselves in court. And I, I know that when they read the law, they might read this and think, well, it says I can proceed here, but that might mean I can't proceed in cases where it doesn't say I can. And so just for clarity, I think we should remove that pro se or through counsel. It's not really changing anything. It's just unnecessary language that will confuse some people. Uh, for Representative Smith, is your question for Representative Landry or on the bill? For Representative Landry. Representative Smith. Thank you. Um, not being a lawyer, I don't know what those words mean. So what does oh, that I'm mean? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Pro se means that you're representing yourself. And okay. so th what, what the language in there says basically that you can either do this representing yourself or through counsel. And... And by including that in this provision and not in others, it might give some people, it might confuse some people to think that there are situations where they can't represent themselves and we, they can rep themsel represent themselves in almost any situation. And so I, I just to avoid confusion, I don't think we should be p starting to put that in. It's, it's implied that anybody can proceed pro se anytime they want. They and don't have the, to have a lawyer. If they want to give up their parental rights and they don't have to have an attorney to do it. Is that? They can still, is that what it, that's No, correct. they don't have to have an attorney. Well, I mean, there are some cir circumstances where they have to waive that right. You know, they have to have an attorney and they have to waive that right. But, but, but in, in almost any proceeding, there are a few limited exceptions, but, but people who can't afford a lawyer have the right to access to right. justice and they can, they can proceed without a lawyer. And so if we put that here and we don't put it other places, I don't want people who are representing themselves to think, oh, well, it doesn't say I can proceed pro se here, so maybe I can't. It's just going right. to cause a little bit of confusion, and okay. I want to try to avoid that. Right. So. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Counselor. <laughs> there are no other questions on the amendment. Is there any objection to the adoption of the amendment? Without objection, the amendment is adopted. For a question on the bill, Representative Smith. Now back to the bill. The bill is actually uh, giving opportunity for an individual to give up their parental rights. Uh, so explain it to me again. Okay, so this bill, it's for the victim of the sexual assault. If she has a child as a result of this sexual assault, that she could petition to the parental rights be terminated of the offender. Of the offender, yes. okay. And it's, okay. on, it's on behalf of the um, sexual assault okay. group out of Baton Rouge in New Orleans for right. bringing this. Fine. Thank sure. you. That clears it up for me. Sure, no problem. There are no other questions. Do you have a right to close? Uh, I waive closing and move final passage. Representative Moreno moves final passage of the bill. As many in favor of final passage will vote yes. Those opposed vote no. And the clerk will open the machine. Vote your machines, members. Vote your machines. Representative Dustin Miller, yes. Representative Seabai, yes. Representative James, yes. Representative Connick, yes. Representative Gary Carter, yes. Are you through voting? Representative Bagley, yes. Are you through voting, members? Are you through voting? Clerk will close the machine. 92 yeas and zero nays, and the bill's finally passed. Representative Moreno moves to adopt the title. Representative Moreno moves to reconsider the vote by which the bill finally passed and lay that motion on the table. Without objection, so ordered.
what 1135 does is um, if, if uh, a woman is raped and she becomes pregnant, this allows for her to file a petition to terminate the parental rights of the offender. And that's what this particular bill does. Do you want to say a few words as to why? Sure. I'm Kathleen Barrios from the East Baton Rouge District Attorney's Office. In addition to that, it's also clarifying um, the definition of a sex offense and calling for termination in cases of both conviction of a sex offense as defined in Louisiana Revised Statutes, Title 15, and for the commission of a sex offense. Right now it says felony rape, which is not a defined term in the law, so we're just asking to clarify that it be a defined term, sex offense, which is already defined in the law for criminal purposes in Title 15. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Senator Gaddy. Uh, thank you for bringing this bill. I just have a quick question. Uh, so. Um, with this child and the situation uh, as it is if the mom wants to do a step-parent adoption down the road does she have to get the uh, consent if these rights are terminated no is, is that what we're trying to solve here what we are trying to solve here is to clear the way for an adoption in the future that this person this rapist parental rights have already been terminated the child will be free to be adopted and, and, and do you feel like that that would allow her under Title IX, under the adoption articles, to do an adoption without the consent of the biological father? Right, because then, I mean, the biological father would have already been terminated. There is, right. you know, it was, he's not the father, essentially. He's been adjudicated, you yeah. know. And I would just ask the staff if y'all could look at that to make sure that subsequent to this determination by the court that the biological mother, if she entered into an adoption proceeding, would not have to have the consent of the biological father. So sometimes under Title IX, when we do adoptions, it's really tough because you have to locate these dads. So if there is a determination, I'd like for that to be clear. That, go ahead. Sorry, sir. No, go ahead. That may be something to include an amendment to make that clear. Mm -hmm. Right. And, so. and I would just ask that, you know, I appreciate you bringing this bill. I'd ask that we move favorable. And if, if we need to do that amendment, I'd, I'd like your permission to do it on the Senate floor. Yes. Thank you, Senator Gaddy. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Senator Martini. I, I don't practice in this area, but what what the, what rights does the, does the child have as to the rapist? The, can, I, can, I assume they can call on for support, or can they not? Well, or I'm, inheritance rights. I'm just I'm, I'm just curious more, I'm if you're terminating all of these rights. You, you know, some. I'm just curious what they are. I'm going to defer to Ms. LaMondre for these so, civil issues. Morgan LaMondre would start again. If um, there are proceedings in which somebody can get no visitation through the civil, co civil code and then also be eligible for child support, but essentially usually when you're terminating the parental rights, you're terminating all contact from the parent. So if by chance they went, <coughs> they went through the, through the, mm -hmm. through the, pro the court process or the juvenile court process, this t this bill passes. You're terminating all rights. Yes, but there visitation, support, inheritance. Any, I mean, I don't even know if they have an inheritance rights. That is correct. But usually in this process, an attorney is appointed to represent the best interest of the child. So they would their voice would still be represented. Oh, I'm not. Person. I'm not questioning that. I'm. I'm just. I'm just curious as to what. Mm -hmm. What rights? I mean, I, I, I guess I was really educating myself. It's, I didn't know whether or not they would, they could get, they get child support, and they get, and I mean, you got somebody that's very, very wealthy, and you know, they, people are going to find, right. find a way to go, go after them if they can. And I'm wondering if you, you know, but that's fine. I, I think anecdotally, Miss Lamandre and I have <laughs> dealt with victims in this situation. They don't want any contact. They don't want any support from these people from the, their rapist. So, I mean, I don't know if Ms. LaMondre has had any experiences otherwise, but. Well, and actually, I do have a letter from one of our client, well, my client that um, Ms. Berrios is sort of, she prosecuted the criminal offense, and she's going through this process right now, which I'd love to read. It might give you more perspective of what she's gone through. But one of the things she has told me is she wouldn't want the money because the money to her would be tainted. It would be tainted money that went to her child but if I well, I understand that but there may be some people that do want the money right you know, you know. And, then well, they and that's why you know I mean it's optional right as we know well know. it is optional yeah. unless but if we pass this bill and that was my point mm -hmm. uh, to make a short story long uh, you know my point was are you terminating all rights no no it's only if she petitions the court okay. right Very yeah. good. thank you is right. it okay for me to read the letter 
sure. from my client? Sure. So this is from my client. It says, three months before my college graduation, I was raped. The rape resulted in my pregnancy. There are no words that can adequately describe the pit of despair into which my life suddenly plunged. I was ashamed, embarrassed, angry, and very, very afraid. The easy way out for me would have been to never report the rape. The easy way out would have been to immediately have an abortion. My conscience did not allow either. I believe the baby conceived deserved life. I came to the realization that the rapist deserved to be identified, punished, and labeled for his crime so he would not be able to victimize another woman. I know that I made the right choices. I have a beautiful son whom I adore. I believe I protected potential victims from this rapist. However, the three-year legal ordeal has been absolutely awful. The system is not friendly to victims. Trial date set, continued reset, etc. The process has been frightening and exhausting. The whole process would be daunting enough to any rape victim, but much more so to those like me who must face the fear of all fears, the possibility that the rapist may be afforded some parental right. Believe me, defense attorneys capitalize on that fear, using it for leverage for their clients, and victims feel forced into complying with a plea deal that goes way too easy on the perpetrator. I believe the rapist should never be afforded any type of parental rights. There is no possible benefit in allowing a rapist to be a force in a child's life. There is no positive in permitting a rapist to parent. Rape victims are re-victimized by the criminal legal process enough, but the thought that a rapist may be forced to be part of any child's life is unfathomable. If the rapist is given any parental rights, the mother victim would be constantly exposed to her rapist and thus be emotionally re-victimized again and again. This would in turn be emotionally detrimental for the child. The idea that a rape victim and the child conceived through rape should be protected from the rapist is very important to me because I believe any other woman who finds herself in this situation I did should be empowered to report the rape, not discouraged from doing so because she fears the rapist will have access to her child. I also believe that any woman who is raped and impregnated should feel empowered to choose life for her child and not to be forced to have an abortion in order to avoid a lifelong connection with her rapist. So that was from my client. So. Well, thank you for reading that. Uh, Senator Luna. Uh, you know, sometimes these last second amendments are the worst to even talk about, but what, what about the possibility of us amending this uh, bill to uh, to preserve rights of inheritance to the child if at some point in time they want to enforce their rights of inheritance after they get to the age of majority. Um, I mean, it, you know, it could be another form of punishment uh, in some instances, but it, at least it gives that child the right to make the decision at some point in time in their life when they're an adult. I mean, I definitely don't think that we would be opposed to anything like that. If I mean, it doesn't mean that they're automatically going to have access to that person so should the child want to and I'm looking at Jerry and I see the, the perplex, perplexed look on his face and he's like oh my god how many different statutes would this affect right because I think uh, that would apply more to civil code provisions why, as opposed to the children's yeah, code yeah why don't we just uh, why don't we forego that today and think about that a little bit and see if that's a way we could work on that you know but kind of on that same line one of the things though Senator Luno that you might be able to propose is as far as all court costs go regarding um, the um, the petition to terminate um, parental rights. Right now, uh, under the way that this is written, from what I understand, it could all fall on the victim. I think the offender should pay. So that might be something that, as far as an additional punishment. It is, but okay. you get into a lot of other issues there, too, with the clerk saying we can never collect from them and we have all these expenses. And so it's but, well, but I do agree that that's, it's terrible for them to have to bear the cost of that uh, as well. Well, in domestic violence cases, they, they don't bear the cost. The offender does. And if I may just add, too, a lot of women in this proceeding are not necessarily going to have perpetrators that were in jail or arrested because sure. um, it does give the mother the right to petition without there being a criminal proceeding that has already taken place or gone on, which, you know, or they may be on probation or something. So I don't think that as far as fines or not being able to collect costs, I think that that's still a possibility that could be done. We don't have any amendments currently for this one, do we? Mm -mm. I'd move favorably. Okay. Oh, was that what you were going to One more from Senator Gaddy. And I just want you to hear us clearly that our, our amendments about not having to get consent for an adoption, I mean, that that's another – time I know when I've done adoptions it's been really difficult on a mom who started in life to try to contact uh, someone who's been a perpetrator of violence and the law now provides that we have to do that we have to look at the putative father registry and things like that but with Senator Luno's idea the many times these perpetrators will pass away mm -hmm. but they'll still inherit and so 
even though that is a tangential contact, it may be a way to help uh, fund the recovery mm-hmm. of the mom. So no, so. I mean these are things that we hadn't um, taken into consideration. So I think these are all you know possibilities. And as I think s- yeah, things to consider. So, you know, guys like uh, Senator Luna and I that that help people every day with these issues in our mm-hmm. small town law offices. You know, we see this come up a lot, and we help we help victims and things like that. So I guess the rest of us are chopped liver. You're, you're well, time. Senator, I guess we're all lawyers here except for Jack. So. <laughs> So, Senator Martini, Senator Ward, Senator Milkovich stands up for victims all the time. So we, we appreciate you bringing this bill. We don't want our amendments in any way to impede the progress of this bill. And if they do, uh, we'll withdraw them. But if they will help in any way, which y'all's plight is for these victims, then we'll help you along the way. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, Senator Donahue says he considers that a compliment, <laughs> Senator Gad. Um, so we have some cards and support. Uh, Ann Stir with National Association of Social Workers, Kathleen Barrios, um, EBR, DA's office, uh, Morgan Lamandre, Star, Sarah Terrell, uh, East Baton Rouge DA's office, um, Michaela Denny, Louisiana Foundation Against Sexual Assault. All right, the board is clear. Uh, we have a motion from Senator Luno to move House Bill 1135 favorably, hearing no objection. Uh, House Bill 1135 will be moved favor. Thank you. House Bill 1135 by Representative Marino. It is an act to amend the Children's Code related to termination of parental rights. All right. Senator Clater. Thank you, Mr. President. There are amendments. Senator Clater, you want your amendments first? Yes, sir, please. Amendment set up by Senator Clater is set number 3425, set 3425 by Senator Clater. Let us get them out, Senator Clayton, first. So. All right, Senator, you want to start explaining them? Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. President. What this bill is about is termination of parental rights by petition, and that uh, essentially if you're the victim of rape and you would like to terminate... Sure. Uh, the parental rights of the guy that raped you, you can petition for that. Senator Gaddy has proposed an amendment, uh, 3410, that makes sure that um, the child that's conceived uh, by this violent act, though the parental right may be terminated, they don't lose their inheritance right. And I have no objection to 3410. Did I speak your amendment properly? Have no objection to the amendment. I got 3410. Well, where's mine? I'd like mine. Thank you. Senator Clayton, on your amendment. Uh, So what amendment number six does on 3425, which is my amendment, uh, it uh, provides an opportunity for the petitioner to keep their address secret. They're the victim of rape. They'd like to keep their uh, address secret and they don't have to put their information in there. On on page four, line two, on amendment number seven, uh, it addressed the cost, that if you're moving for a termination of parental rights, that you shouldn't have to pay for the cost uh, where the guy raped you in this matter. That's what amendments contained in 3425 do. Any questions on the amendment? Is there any objection to adoption of the amendment? Senator, you have another set? It looks, I see a question. It's on the bill. Yes, sir. What about the other amendment, Mr. Secretary? I have no objection to 1135 by Gaddy. Gaddy, you want to, Gaddy. Well, let's, let's bring it up first. Amendment sent up by Senator Gaddy is set number 3410, set number 3410 by Senator Gaddy. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate. This is uh, uh, Amendment 3410. It simply says that termination shall result in the loss of custody, visitation, contact, and other parental rights of the perpetrator regarding the trial, but shall not affect the inheritance rights of the child. Um, and, and, what, and that would be uh, what the amendment does, seeing no question. I'd- Any questions on the amendment? Any objection to adoption of it? Senator, you have further amendments? I have further amendments. Next set of amendments is set number 3428 by Senator Ward. He withdraws the same exact one as Senator Gaddis. 
I Any further amendments? Further discussion? Senator Clinton, you have a right to close. Move final. Then move final pass. The machines open up in favor of chest pose no second. Vote your machines, please. Vote your machines. Vote you yes. Senator Chabet, yes. You through voting? You through voting, close them up. Thirty six years under the bill final pass reconsider by objects on. Senator Charberry asked that we pick back up House Bill number 918 by